fusion is the ultimate energy source and it is 20 years away and it will always be. My goal today is to share that. Some days you feel confident. Other days, you wonder if you are wasting time chasing a dream that may never work. Fusion has a way of creating both feelings. It is the hardest energy problem on Earth, yet also the most inspiring. This is the story of a team trying to prove that electrostatic fusion, long regarded as impossible, might actually reach net energy. Their journey is filled with setbacks, pressure, doubt, strange breakthroughs, and moments that changed everything. Today, we explore how they pushed through fear, searched old experiments for answers, trusted their instincts, and built a compact machine meant to do what no one has ever done before. Doubt, pressure, and the first signs of a new idea. The hardest moments came when the team questioned if they were frauds. Their experiments failed often, and they were not meeting their Series A goals. They did not even have a working fusion machine that could reach the conditions they needed. The pressure was intense. The voice of doubt kept asking if electrostatic fusion had any path to net energy. Most experts said no. The internet said no. Yet the team pushed on because they believed that someone had to try. Even on the worst days, they sensed that if they could get the physics right, the world would look different overnight. Then, something unexpected happened. Jesus showed up and asked if they knew about old Russian electrostatic fusion experiments from the 1980s and 1990s. Those experiments looked strangely similar to the problems they faced. When they compared the data, the patterns matched. Their confusion turned into excitement. A sense of possibility opened. It felt like a missing piece that had been sitting in plain sight. Before this turn, the founders had already been shaped by earlier work. One joined Blue Origin in 2014. Working on reusable rockets showed how limited chemical propulsion was for building a real space economy. If millions of people were ever going to live and work in space, the world would need fusion. Fission could not launch safely. Fusion was the only answer. By 2018, the idea of starting a fusion company was already forming. They wanted to take a big swing at energy abundance and push humanity further than any rocket alone could. Fusion itself is simple to describe. Two small atoms fuse and release huge energy. But building a machine that is small, affordable, and fast to iterate is extremely hard. Most designs are huge and slow. The team wanted something compact. They wanted something no bigger than a Toyota Tundra. That goal shaped everything and forced them to rethink what a fusion device could be. Building the Orbitron and trying a new path. Fusion machines come in many forms. Tokamaks and Stellarators dominate. Lasers take another approach. Beyond them are niche ideas like magnetic mirrors and electrostatic confinement, where high voltage traps ions instead of magnets. The team saw these approaches like early airplane designs. Many shapes, many ideas, all trying to fly. They sought a combination that could work at a small scale and still deliver enough energy for meaningful research. Heating was a major challenge. Most fusion devices rely on reactions that reheat the plasma, but that requires a large size. They needed a method that worked in a compact device. Electrostatic heating looked efficient. They realized electrons could be magnetically confined, like in a microwave magnetron, while ions were confined electrostatically. This hybrid model became their core insight and gave them a direction no one else was exploring in a serious way. One founder immersed himself completely in fusion research, reading everything he could find. During the pandemic, they pitched this unusual concept to investors from their home offices. If they could build a small Orbitron using commercial parts and rapid iteration, they might move fusion research forward faster than anyone expected. Traditional startups show traction through customers. Fusion startups cannot. Their seed goal was simple. Build a device that confined ions, trapped electrons, and made neutrons. They rented a warehouse and hired 13 people. Because the device was compact, they could redesign it constantly. They built 27 versions in one year. 
In February, the first Orbitron reached 5080 kilovolts. When filled with deuterium, it produced fusion neutrons. That success unlocked their Series A. But now they had to deliver more. They aimed for higher voltage, stronger fields, more injection, and higher density than any electrostatic device before. The work became harder and more complex. They wanted to prove the key question. Can electrostatic fusion reach useful energy levels, even if only for a moment? Instability, setbacks, and a moment of clarity. By 2024, they hit every milestone except density. Voltage worked, the injection worked, but density refused to increase. To gain energy, ions need to be hot and dense for a long time. Instabilities ruined those conditions. A rotating mode appeared again and again. It acted like a washing machine with clothes stuck on one side. The plasma clumped, rotated, and slammed into the walls. Once that happened, confinement collapsed. No density, no progress, no path forward. Months passed, every attempt failed. Simulations showed the same problem. The team tried new shaping, new timing, new electrodes, and dozens of small adjustments. Nothing stopped the rotating mode, and time was running out. Investors wanted answers, and the team knew they were close to missing their last major milestone. The stress became heavy enough that they wondered privately if they were watching their dream collapse. One founder had done turbulence work in graduate school and understood that certain shear forces could stabilize vortices. This idea felt unrelated until they ran tests on a machine called Marty. They pulsed the cathode from 0 to 100 kilovolts to study how the instability formed. The data looked odd. It did not fit their expectations. It took weeks to understand. Then Eric, their plasma physicist, realized something important. The pulse might be spinning the plasma and creating shear that disrupts the instability. At that same moment, Jesus mentioned the Russian PSP2 experiments. Those experiments used powerful cathode pulses to spin the plasma and stabilize it. Suddenly, everything fit together. Their turbulence knowledge, odd data, and old experiments all pointed in the same direction. After months of frustration, they finally had a real path forward. A technique that could tame the instability that threatened everything. Gin, rapid rebuilds, and the push toward first light. They moved fast. Eric led the physics effort. Christine became the program manager. They needed new diagnostics, revised radii, updated electrodes, vibration control, and better end caps. Every week, they tore down parts of the machine only to rebuild it again. Friday became rebuild day so the machine could bake over the weekend and be ready for Monday tests. Iteration was their advantage, and they leaned into it with full force. They named the new machine Jin, after Jin Erso from Rogue One, who stole the Death Star plans. They joked they were now stealing insights from the Soviets to save their mission. Jin included new electrodes, new probes, better magnetization, tighter mechanical control, and the new pulsed shear stabilization method. The machine looked sharper, more deliberate, and capable than any version before it. Excitement rose, but so did pressure. They believed this machine could finally reveal whether their approach worked. The day of the defining experiment felt like their Series A final exam. Everything they had built led to this moment. Failure meant going back to uncertainty. Success meant rewriting what people believed about electrostatic fusion. They prepared to fire the machine. A bright flash would show the gas ionizing as it accelerated to a fraction of the speed of light. For a brief moment, it would be the hottest object on Earth. The countdown began. Three, two, one. The machine ignited. Data streamed in. Something significant had happened. They had reached plasma densities far higher than expected. The microbarometer shut off. Their approach had worked in a way few believed possible. A new phase and a realistic path forward. A month later, after carefully reviewing the data, the result was clear. They had reached about 4 by 1012 per cubic centimeter. This was 40 times higher than their Series A target, and higher than any electrostatic device had reached in this configuration. 
the breakthrough was not small. It meant their approach, once seen as unrealistic, could now move forward with real confidence. They returned to rapid iteration. They ran 52 tests in a single Friday, something no large fusion lab could dream of. Stability improved. Signals became clearer. The machine behaved more predictably. For the first time, they felt they were shifting from a science experiment with a risk of failure to an engineering challenge they could scale. They were beginning to climb the fusion triple product chart measurably. The mission felt real again, like something that could eventually power a new era of energy and space exploration. Their journey showed the value of wandering, of trying, of refusing to quit. They found answers in old papers, strange data, turbulence theory, iteration, and relentless work. They moved from doubt to possibility, from instability to control, from fear to proof. And now they stand at the verge of a new path toward fusion energy that could change the world. This story began with doubt and fear, but grew into determination and discovery. The team faced failures, instability, and pressure, yet they kept searching for answers. Their breakthrough came from unexpected places, and their commitment carried them forward. Today, they have shown that electrostatic fusion can reach plasma densities once considered impossible. Their work is far from done, but the path is real and clearer than ever. This journey proves the power of resilience, curiosity, and belief in a future shaped by abundant clean energy. Fusion may be difficult, but someone must try. And this team is showing what persistence can unlock.